You're listening to WTBU, music to break up to. Yeah, but you violated the rules by trying to collaborate with the enemy. So what you're saying is, I'm the only one who should be adhering to all the rules. <laughs> not, not you. You're, you're the victim here. <laughs> you're, you're innocent in all things, aren't you, Sam? In all regards. Welcome to the breakup, uh, starring Sam Young, a complete asshole, <laughs> and Jacob Waskow, an innocent victim. Yes, the power dynamic has finally shifted my way. I am in control of the podcast. I control the vertical and the horizontal. I have no words, <laughs> and I must scream. <laughs> Which is a problem on an audio medium. Yeah, I just... Fuck. <laughs> when, when we started this, Sam, when we started the, this adventure, and it's been like a few months now. Yeah, yeah, it has. I remember the exact moment when you suggested this idea to me. Sure. I was on a bus in the middle of Gatineau. Gatineau's a city that's built along the river, and the summer and the summer sun was gold, like the Rubicon. It was it was uh, reflecting uh, through your golden locks, <laughs> the sun in your hair. And I looked at you and said, <laughs> "Our love is not like this summer. Our love <laughs> must endure the winter, and in all things, it will grow into a beautiful rose." When did our podcast become a Nicholas Sparks novel? And you looked at me and said. I fucking hate you. Let's watch some shitty movies. (laughs) And we did. And reader, we did. I gave you the best nights of my life. And this is where it brought us. I keep saying there's no magic anymore. (sighs) Sam. Yes. What did I make you play this week, huh? You made me play. Buddy. uh, The. Buddy boy. I don't know the year. Undertale. The indie hit video game. Ooh, that sounds trendy. Yes. Give me, give me a sweet ass summary. Sweet ass summary. Well, first of all, I'm going to say to our loyal listeners: if you haven't played Undertale and you are interested in playing Undertale, I, we're going to spoil it all. So don't, you know. I, I doubt we'll spoil it all. We'll, we'll spoil most. We'll of spoil it. most of it. So if you just want to hear Jacob be in agony, just skip about you know 20 minutes or so. Um, yeah. I don't really have a summary this week, other than to say. I named the character, as I probably will for all video games you give me now, where I can name the character. I named the character Waskow. And, of course, the twist (laughs) in the end is is that that's the fallen child who has preceded you, who turns out to be an omni-sociopath, like, monster. Yeah. (laughs) So that felt very appropriate to me. Um, What can I I say? In terms of summarizing, I would say Undertale is a a sweet little earthbound homage that is really, really judgmental of the players. Oh, yeah. Holy uh, shit, this game was judging me. Yeah, uh, real hard. So when you inadvertently spoiled <laughs> a, bit, a bit of your uh, experience with the game, time about being the last boss, uh, you mentioned that last boss was Asgore. So you fought Asgore. I did fight Asgore. So you didn't get the true ending. Well, actually, I did. I actually got a new. Neut- I got a neutral run, and then I got the true pacifist ending. Um, oh shit! I kind of accidentally did all the things you need to do. Like, I went, okay, That's... you made me play another goddamn dating sim, you son of a bitch. Like, this is... <laughs> there is, like, three dating sim bits in this. There there are two and a half. <laughs> don't, don't you put this on me. I guess the, uh, I guess the date... It's not a date with Undine. Um, it's, it's just a hangout where you burn her house down. It's a friendship. Mm-hmm. It's a friendship game. And you, and you have to become friends with her. She demands it, or she'll kill you. <laughs> and did you become friends with Undine? I did become. Well, I, obviously, I became friends with everyone. Yeah, I spared. Of well, you did. I mean, here's the thing. Like, I mean, I knew a little bit about Undertale in that you know there was this genocide thing, and there was this thing where you couldn't, um, if you you could just not kill anyone. And I mean, the game is pretty upfront right at the start about like you can either kill people or you can spare them. And so I took that sparing the monsters is more challenging. I, I mean, I know that I've heard, now having read about the genocide run, it, that actually is like physically hard. Um, but well, it, it's it, hard. Yeah. Un- 
it's it's easy then it gets very hard yeah well i mean the the true last boss is like nigh impossible so i mean i guess the summary of this game is like you're a little kid who ends up in in this little world of monsters and you have to work mm. your way out and either you can kill everyone and like cause the world to end or you can save everyone and not kill anyone and be really deconstructive mm-hmm. about how rpgs work and video games in general work and like free yeah. all the monsters so they can go back up into the world and, and have sweet as times i do kind of wish that i'd not known anything about it because i like inevitably over the last however long it's been out you can do nothing but read about the twist of undertale nonetheless mm-hmm. there were things that surprised me um such as such as um i didn't know quite who flowy or flowy i guess is how you pronounce it was mm. um so sam i'm sorry to interrupt mm. we've been doing this this is episode number nine yeah this is nine you know mm-hmm. you like this game i do yeah i i like this game with with a few kind and of I, caveats I can tell. We'll, we'll talk about that oh what fucking caveat it's Come most on, tell me now no 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 what finish setting up your villain monologue like what are you saying here i don't have a monologue okay well what I, were you gonna I, say I have all energies just I can tell when you like a thing mm-hmm. because you become incredibly boring. <laughs> like just you fucking the, the humor stops. Yeah, it, you, it you, stops dead. You just get really. I have no. You just get really analytical yeah. and just like oh, yeah, there was this and there was this and there was this. So fu- bring out the jokes. Bring out the jokes. I got oh, fuck. Tell me. Um, I can tell you the thing. The thing that I wasn't crazy about was the bullet hell even though i pre like i appreciated it like on an intellectual level of like dodging around like okay this is different from i hate pitched battle rpgs so this is much more interesting than that nonetheless when i got to the last boss i had not did not have enough heals to deal with him and i did not have like any super good armor or anything so i just was like well i've now died 25 times to this goat man Mm -hmm. (laughs) with Mm -hmm. with a giant trident Mm -hmm. Um, go dead so you've done a neutral route i did the neutral and, route and then flowey berated me um and then and a super good route yeah did the super good so route. in that neutral route who did you kill i did not kill anyone oh really 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 i see okay then who did you oh next? actually no that's a lie that's a dirty lie i i killed yes i accidentally killed Toriel because i couldn't figure out i knew yeah, it yeah because i couldn't figure out how to do it so i reset it uh or i didn't reset it i just uh i didn't save and i went back and i figured out oh you just keep sparing her <sighs> son of a bitch you killed goat mom. i know i killed goat mom but i i saved goat mom after that because i was like it tells you right at the beginning oh you have to like take a monster down to a sliver of health which is not at all true no, almost none of them you you have to do that like practically yeah, none no. of the monsters um so yeah, that's none of them, i think that's much. kind of his way of trying to trick you into murdering them oh yeah absolutely yeah i feel like this game really wants to judge me and what's interesting is so much of the backstory come because I kind of went on the wiki, you know, I, I dived through because it's interesting. Um, so yeah. much of the wiki indicates like all this backstory you actually get from doing the genocide route. Oh, yeah. All these things. Oh, you learn all these things. And the game also emphatically is like, you're a sicko if you do this. You're a fucking sicko. How, co- how can you even you can even watch this on YouTube, you fucking fucking sick fuck and i'm like i just oh, i yeah. just want to know the cool story you wrote i don't want to know <laughs> and and i don't know actually how i feel about that because on the one hand there is that i totally get what he's saying about the depersonalization of like you just murder people for experience in video games on the other hand i'm like i i sorry let me put this a different way i feel like he wants to complicate your feelings about everything about even about knowing things about the game like because it there is definitely a feeling of being a completionist is a bad thing or or you should you should question the morality of being a completionist in a video game and it's almost like saying here is my art but you shouldn't actually engage with it if you want to feel like a good person well and that's that's probably that's too simplified but that's that's sort of where i i came out of it on it because I have no interest so, in doing the genocide. Right? I'm just none well, at all. No, uh, actual terrible human being Eli mm. is the only person I know. Other, who's another done... friend of the podcast. Don't don't give them that satisfaction. <laughs> Eli is the only is the only person I know who's ever done a genocide. Right? And my first words out of my mouth when they told me, "Oh yeah, I did it. It was totally great." Was you're a monster. <laughs> to which they nodded and grinned and said, "Yeah, buddy, I am." 
That sounds and, like... And then they hugged me. That, and, and I was really <laughs> creeped feel, out. Felt really complicated. That sounds like friend well, of the podca- podcast, Eli. Um, and, I mean, there will always be people who gained the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's, there's this whole mechanic of, if you do the genocide route, if you load up the game, it's just darkness. Yeah, yeah. And then and if you stare at the darkness long enough... Uh, Waskow shows yeah, up. Yeah, Waskow shows and, up. <laughs> and Waskow's like, hey, buddy, like, fuck, uh, you want to play the game again? Like, it's cool. You just got to make a deal with me, you know? You just got to steal fuck. your soul. Yeah, you know. So, I'm just imagining uh, it, though, like, with your voice. I can't do an impression of you, but it was like, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, what do, what do you want, man? Um, but... When you make that deal, mm. the game resets. Yeah, yeah. But it's it sets a flag within the game files to be like, oh, you made the deal. Yeah. You you can just delete that. Yeah. You just go into the system, like the fo- folder for the game, and just rip it out. And so it's if you want to be a completionist, mm. the art is fragile enough to just snap it in half. Yeah. I mean, I, we haven't talked about this on the show before, but uh. I, you and I collectively have probably played the game Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines no less than like 20 times. And I don't think I've ever been able to bring myself to like play it as an asshole. Because like you really easily can play that game as an asshole. I've, but... I've done it. I've done it once. Yeah. Did you do it as the Nosferatu? No. Uh, Nosferatu is, it was a sweet young boy. Sweet young guy. In a summer love with Vivi. <laughs> that's a different game. That's that's not this game. That's not this game. Uh Let's so not, you let's like not this go game. down the world of darkness. You, world. Yeah, I like this game. Um, you like you like it a lot. Yeah, I think. I mean, unreservedly, even though I had some like, it was one of Who's those. Your favorite character? It's Papyrus. <laughs> See, I think Undyne is my favorite yeah. with the whole intro speech of her about to go into this like hero soliloquy about how terrible humans yeah. are, and then she went, "No, this is stupid. I'm just gonna kill you. Fuck you." All fuck, the bits fuck, with the skeletons were were quite delightful. Oh yeah. So, if Papyrus was your favorite favorite character, <laughs> mm. how was his date? Was was that what winned you over? <laughs> yeah, uh, what's going on? I, I a hot date with Papyrus. Yes, hot boner date. Hot bone on bone action. Yeah, I I. I I mean, I've kind of forgotten some of the specific details, but I I love the thing where they they speak in their own fonts and they're both bad fonts, and that was cute. Okay, th- this isn't going again to the podcast, uh-huh. but I feel I am compelled to tell you this: uh-huh. you are not the only person who really loves Papyrus and Sans. Oh, no. Like really, really no. loves Papyrus and Sans. No, no, there's. DeviantArt is fucking like oh. it's a wall of bones. As soon as you said DeviantArt, <laughs> and and hentai fans, why is all, it all the... horrible? Why <laughs> do they have to be horrible? Why can't people just like this sweet little game and not sexualize <laughs> fucking skeletons? But, well, that's not the worst thing to sexualize in that game. No. But more importantly, <laughs> more importantly, skeletons do not have penises. No, they don't. <laughs> Except in this Nor do they, they do. they're little 8-bit sprites. They don't even have fucking toes. <laughs> Fuck. Stupid internet. <laughs> You're all perverts. Perverts, every one of you. No. Yep. Uh, Doesn't that make you appreciate that game a whole lot more? I guess. Well, that's definitely going, <laughs> that's definitely going in the podcast. <laughs> Enjoy, Sam, my boy. Um, boy. <laughs> I really like that each of the uh, the little I don't know what the word the, the way they chatter have different like sounds like the little like bit bit crushed like, like burr, 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 burr. yeah whoop, 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 whoop. he managed to get a lot of character into those characters oh yeah. yeah and the best lesbian romance in any video game I've seen yes and that it was a real relationship uh, have you played <laughs> I, have you played Earthbound no. No, interesting. Because I, I, I didn't have a Nintendo. I mean, I, I, you know, I was a dirty thief and I emulated it. And also, like Earthbound is an incredibly rare game. Oh, it's yeah. It's actually quite difficult to find a cartridge of it. But I've, I've played like I played it with a uh, another. I don't know if we would call her a friend of the podcast because I don't think she's listened to it yet. But a neutral associated party to the podcast, uh, uh, our friend Augusta, uh, she and I played it a lot when we were teenagers, and I'm. Uh, uh, mostly it was me like watching her play it, but uh, 
I, I've always loved like the style and the the whimsy of Earthbound. So this was this was a lot of fun to engage with. Now you know they have like two other mother games. I know, like yeah. Earthbound. I tried playing the NES one. It's not very good. What about Mother Three? Well, I've just not gone around to playing it. Well, I mean, there's no physical copies in North no, America. No, they're not because they never they they never sent sent it to nope. North America. There's a fan translation, rather yeah. famously, actually. I I think going back to the original topic, I'm pretty yeah. sure the guy who made uh, Undertale worked on that fan trip. Yeah, he apparently is a big deal on like the Sturman.net and like the Earthbound hacking community. Well, he's all he's also had a successful career of one song that he's managed <laughs> to milk for three different franchises. Yeah. I know he worked is, on the uh, uh, the Homestuck soundtrack a lot. Oh God, don't don't even bring bring up bring up bring. That's bring, a whole other bring, and I've that's had, another wormhole. I've had it's too not. much. I've I've not even finished the can. How, how am I still? <laughs> oh boy. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. I got my diet coke here, and I'm very happy. <laughs> it, it didn't didn't splurge for something good. I am not above slumming it, Jacob, as you know. Tisk tisk tisk. So, final verdict. Final verdict. Uh, Undertale is really wonderful, and if anyone is still listening to this part who wants to play it but hasn't, but decided to get super spoiled on it, go play it. Um, yeah. Maybe we didn't spoil that much, but I think most people know the basic concept. Well, there there are lots of little like bits and twists and turns to it that mm-hmm. make it like mm-hmm. an invent. We we didn't even talk about the robot. Yeah. Oh God, I love the robot, but I'm not that one. Yeah. We'll cut off the spoilers here. Um, yeah. so Jacob, what did I get you to do this week? Actually, well, this will yeah. require a preface, I think, uh, cause we didn't get to explain it last time, but, but do, do tell, do tell what you had to do. So my boy, yes. this week was my punishment yes. for being a good son and, and watching Bernie yes. with my mother, yes. who I had not seen for months. Yes. And so delicious. Your tears are just streaming down. You decided that an appropriate punishment would be for me to watch Cosmopolis, a, m- a movie that I famously, <sighs> famously. in our friend group. Uh, famously, um, there is a scene in this movie where the main character gets his, uh, he has like it's a, prostate, a exam. prostate exam. He has a digital prostate exam. And Jacob basically looked to Enemy of the Podcast and nothing more. Jesse Callen said, I don't think I can do this. Can we just stop now? <laughs> Can we just stop, we just stop here, the movie please. here? Yeah, <laughs> I I can't keep the charade up any longer. But but I just... in our delusions, Jesse, uh, enemy of the podcast, Jesse Cal and I decided that no, Jacob has to watch this movie and he's going to like it. We're gonna make him like it. <laughs> and then when Jacob came to visit us from his far away uh, far away land, uh, unsolicited, I I turned to enemy of the podcast, an enemy. <laughs> fucking enemy i i just said apropos of nothing hey let's watch cosmopolis and they turned to me just this this hollow glassy yes, look he, he does have in that. his eyes as he said but that that was <laughs> sam's punishment for the podcast was that and i went well <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it though. Yep. And then you watched it. So and then I watched it. And then Jesse came to me and said, "I'm betraying Jacob." And said, <laughs> "I told him I I told him you were going to punish him with Cosmopolis after he wanted to watch it, and we watched it anyway." And I said, "Okay, I will double betray, <laughs> will double betray Jacob, or rather Jesse will double betray Jacob." And so I deemed it appropriate that Jacob, having thought he got one over on me, should watch Cosmopolis twice in a row. And this was the episode that we lost, and Jacob really did, like, howl with anger and and rage and betrayal. And I am so sad that the audience does not get to get to hear that. So, so. I woke up bright and early at noon 30. <laughs> woke up this morning, got yourself I, a gun. I sat down at the computer and the first thing i did was started watching cosmopolis and my entire day from the day i've woken up the minute to now has been cosmopolis because (laughs) sam laughing sam suggested okay you watch it but you can you can just watch it twice over the week and i went no 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 my friend 
I will do this in, in the spirit of your sadism. And I'll just watch this movie twice in a row, mm-hmm. back to back, only pausing to eat. <laughs> And, and any other bodily functions I needed. Mm-hmm. So I sat myself down. I leaned back in my chair. I, I got some Faygo. <laughs> and That's I, the important part. And I fucking watched Cosmopolis. How did you feel about Cosmopolis after watching it? Aren't you supposed to ask me for the summer? Oh, sure. Course? Let's hear that. Let's hear that. So, Cosmopolis is a movie featuring Edward from the Twilight Saga. <laughs> He, he has dumped Not a that, joke. He's dumped that loser what's-her-face, <laughs> whose name I don't remember, after they had their weird baby. He is now a successful business person in Los Angeles, New York, Toronto. And it is Toronto, he is trapped. It's set in New York, but a lot of the footage it's is... pretty like, obviously Toronto, yeah. Continue. Yeah, a lot Continue. of the footage is super obviously Toronto. Yeah. And he is trapped in what looks to be the, the Blade Runner version <laughs> of what... Um, <laughs> Of what limousines look like. Oh man, do you just want to talk about Blade Runner instead? Because like that might be more interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I really want Uh, after this. Okay, after after this, this. we'll just talk about Blade. (laughs) So and so begins the wretched tale of Vampire (laughs) Edward, as he travels very slowly across Manhattan to try and get a haircut. Along the way, he has sex, not counting the prostate exam, <laughs> about four different times with four different women and maybe one man. And he also eats about enough food for a family. <laughs> all, all of this is interspersed in the middle with a philosophic interlude with the most evil fucking <laughs> theorist who he obviously paid to be like his like conscience <laughs> who is who is this overhyped yes woman who gives these baseless <laughs> shitty theoretical justifications on the march of progress love the car and how pro- <laughs> how progress is hurt it's not that it's not that she loves the car that upsets me it's that whenever she gets into anything <laughs> remotely related to say facts <laughs> the precise word words she uses are i know nothing about this <laughs> the flimsy flimsy ethical loopholes <laughs> that make up the lattice of her mind makes me want to murder everyone on the screen she is then i, mean, I find the, out the movie is not sympathetic to her worldview like they're the, the cars sim- the movie is sympathetic the movie is sympathetic to no one. <laughs> no one is a good person in this movie. I was going to say, Paul, really Paul Giamatti his... is sort of, there's some sympathy for him, but even then. The, the doctor? No, the guy at the end. Bello. Bello? Oh. Whatever his name is. Not Well, not really. That's the weird trick to the movie, is like, we can sympathize with Paul Giamatti in that he has an a, like a porta potty that he poops in <laughs> in his shitty rundown apartment. That does not have any working water. Mm. He just shits in a hole. But Vampire Bedward constantly says things like, you don't care about other people. And Paul Giamatti does not disagree with any of that. Paul Giamatti makes it clear at the end, I'm going to kill you, Bedward, (laughs) because I'm mad that you you didn't give me enough blowjobs like all those women you had sex with. So my, my immediate summation is, Edward from Twilight goes on a sexaholic rampage after finally having sex for the first time in hundreds of years in the middle of the Twilight Saga. <laughs> That's it. This is That's what it. this is what he does when he leaves in the middle of the first movie. <laughs> this is where he goes. This, this, this is it. He, he gets there a really great four hundred one k. He kills. There, there, he tries there to sex in the first Jamari. movie though. It's like. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's immediately like in the last book is when they finally have sex and <laughs> yeah, immediately do. pregnancy. Oh God. I know. I know way too much about twilight for someone who really doesn't like it at all. Uh, What's the next question? Oh uh, God. What did you think of the movie? <laughs> so the first time I watched this movie, which was with the group. Mm-hmm. Hold on. I need more liquor. <laughs> It's going to be a rough one, folks. The first time I watched this movie, I really didn't like it. No. Like, no, at all. I did not. I, re- I really hated the movie. And the thing about the movie is that it's not a movie. It's a play. Yeah, it's a play. It's, and we've well, we've established Jacob does not really care for movies that are plays. To, to give of the barest bit of context for people who have not heard of this movie, and 
you probably haven't. Um, it's literally what he said. It's Edward from Twilight running around New York, a.k.a. Toronto, in a limo while a bunch of protesters try to, like, mess him up. And then he kills his bodyguard and goes out, has, like, an existentialist conversation with Paul Giamatti. And when I... That sounds like I'm making fun of it, but this movie is... I think this movie is amazing. Um, and that's actually pretty a pretty accurate summary. Also, yes, he has more food than anyone could possibly eat in a day. And a lot of sex. And a lot of sex. Also, Rotten Tomatoes disagrees with you with giving it a 56% freshness. Oh, interesting. I didn't know. I, I know it divided. Yeah. I know it divided critics. Now, when I say when I say it's amazing, that doesn't necessarily mean I think it's like good per se. I mean, I think it's good, but different from no, other movies I, that I think are don't. good. Don't, 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 don't back delete this. Okay, don't back down. Okay, it's good. Yeah, Fine. just admit that you have terrible taste sometimes, <laughs> and you genuinely like the smoothie for what do. it is. Well, as we we discussed in re- about Redline, <laughs> like I like some shit. Yeah, you like some terrible, terrible shit. Mm-hmm. So first time I couldn't even. I, no, I, Jacob couldn't even get through it. I got to the pro- to the prostate section, which is not laid in. That's like the first quarter of the movie still is the Stuke and a prostate exam. And I'm just like, no, fuck this. These people are talking like fucking Shakespeare, except if Shakespeare was like this weird libertarian capitalist. And it's just, <laughs> I fucking hate this. So we, we drop, we drop the baby on the bathroom floor and I fucking left. Then when I visited and, and in, in clandestine, watched the movie Mm -hmm. with enemy the podcast and enemy fucking enemy Mm -hmm. i actually liked it yeah after sitting through and watching its entirety i went you know this is so pretentious and up its own asshole (laughs) but i appreciate it for what it's doing yeah and I had ooh, this long winded speech. <laughs> U.S. Weekly calls Robert Pattinson's Cosmopolis excruciating. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking up something else yeah. that just came up in Google. <laughs> yeah, that excruciating um, is the, definitely... the way the way yeah. you put it to me in the uh, the last episode, kind of after we were talking about it, was that like this will be a movie where you go like, I hate this. Oh, okay, I like this. I hate this. I really hate this. Yeah, if we were going to trace my emotional and mental state mm. when I started watching for the third and then fourth <laughs> time, that is about how it went. Mm-hmm. And at around the halfway mark was when I realized this movie says absolutely nothing. <laughs> like, it it says a lot because it's a play, and plays are shitty in that they must rely on dialogue to their exclusivity. I feel personally attacked here. Yeah, fu- you fucking better. <laughs> you could have the most meaningful use of snow in a movie that actually changes meaning within the course of the film. And that could be just a beautiful wordless scene that makes you cry in the theater while like some dumb fucking moron idiots are giggling <laughs> and snorting because this woman's trying to have sex with like a hologram over her body. That's just so funny, right? You fucking <laughs> sycophantic <laughs> piece of shit who don't know anything about art. Sure, you don't want to talk about. Sure, you want to talk about Blade Runner. <laughs> I hate Ontario. <laughs> you, you like ne- Neanderthal scum fuckers. <laughs> Where did this go? Okay, hang on. Let's unpack this. <laughs> no, no, we're keep, we're going we're going to keep going. So. <laughs> Cosmopolis is the exact opposite of that, where the use of language is interesting. Mm -hmm. Once you get over the self-righteousness of it, Mm -hmm. I can see why Enemy of the Podcast, Enemy, likes this movie. I think he likes it more than I do. Well, part of it is because for a long time, their quality of good writing was how many single lines are there that just are amazing single lines. That's... Sorry, that was that's a standard of enemy of the podcast, but nothing more. Jesse Cowell. Yes. Oh, I don't remember him saying that to me. Well, that that was some time ago. I'm not sure that that's an opinion they have true. now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he would listen but, to the podcast, perhaps he could come and correct us on that. <clears throat> yeah. Does, do do they not? He is he has not listened to it yet. <laughs> I I played him episode four, but like, which he thought was really funny, but he is yet. Well, he he doesn't like podcasts, as we discussed. Like, all right. Anyway, and again, if he takes issue with this, he should come and listen to the fucking podcast, and then he can talk to me about well, about all the shade we're throwing at him. All right. So 
that that is a measure of writing aptitude for them. Right. Okay. Single lines that are divor- that might may or may not be divorced of context, but that work really, really well. And this movie is full of those mm. interesting twists of language and meaning. I shouldn't say meaning because this movie means absolutely nothing, <laughs> but at least at least of like the surface level of words. Uh-huh. There's there's a lot of verbal gymnastics going on, and and it's beautiful, very shallowy beautiful, uh-huh. but sh- but beautiful. The problem with that is it is devoid of any sort of pathos. Pathos, yeah. Is that the word? Yeah, pathos. Yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. word I'm thinking of. You cannot empathize with with the movie. Well, you you can empathize with any of the characters. That's the key thing. And I don't think Cronenberg, and this was directed by Cronenberg, yeah, it was wants you to empathize with anyone. <laughs> like no one here that the movie shows I, I was, you. I was going to say like this. Unlike Twilight, this is Robert Pattinson's best performance as a vampire. Yeah, that's the thing. Is Robert Pattinson hated everything to do with jacob twilight. is oddly enough a huge fan of robert pattinson because he hates twilight not because jacob yeah. hates twilight which he does but because robert pattinson hates twilight yeah but he f- he fucking committed to an entire franchise <laughs> despite hating this character money money dear boy. You- <laughs> well no 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 but actively using that hate mm. and thinking edward was a complete loser in defining how he would act out that character mm. I'm inspired by that. <laughs> and I have no idea why you weren't. I'm not I didn't say I wasn't inspired by it. He does a very good job being a soulless vampire monstrosity in this movie. Yeah, does. That does not know how the world works. Like when he shoots his bodyguard, they have this like stupid fucking smart gun mm-hmm. that has a passcode to unlock it. And right when he's about to like have the climax with this completely different much shittier gun he brings the gun up and whispers the passphrase because that's how he thinks guns work now <laughs> is you have to say this magical little code phrase I didn't catch for that the, the shoot time I saw it. For, yeah he has to say the magical passphrase to kill I people don't, i don't know how you don't see this movie as amazing <laughs> basically it's stupid it's a stupid stupid movie that i think ultimately wants to be treated seriously the irony of me doing this to you is if i had just let you like get off with having seen it the second time all the way through and kind of liked it you would be perfectly happy and enemy of the podcast jesse Kell and i would have been satisfied in like kind of making you like it but no i had to push it even further basically it was watching the movie those extra two times and confirming for myself this isn't a movie doing clever things this is a movie thinking it's clever and thinking it's really smart, doing occasionally a few clever things. Well, here's here's another piece of satisfaction. The budget was twenty point five million dollars and it made six. Let's go. Yeah. Well, it just means our Pattinson's not getting any work anytime soon. <laughs> That, that he would be the one who would be hurting this is mm-hmm. a shame. You know, it's interesting. When I make you watch a bad thing, it seems like you kind of do get a little less funny, Jacob. Are you kidding? I thought all of that was hilarious. <laughs> it was hysterical, this rant about the cinema and talking to Well, that, that was about a completely different movie that I saw this week. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was... Okay, come on. What was that about? I thought you liked Blade Runner. No, I loved I loved Blade Runner. That movie was amazing. Yeah. It was It was like... I watched and sat Blade Runner 2040, whatever. 49, yeah. And I went into this going, oh, this is just going to be a sort of Pap and Drek mm-hmm. action remake mm-hmm. of this kind of classical film noir, which I'd watched to completion earlier in the week. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, this is, this is, I don't love this movie, but it's a really good movie. Yeah, yeah. And I watched 2049, and I was surrounded by other people my age, which unfortunately are college students. I don't worry, like where this is going. Well, they were probably expecting the same thing. But the difference is they wanted it, whereas you didn't. Yeah, I didn't care what was going to be thrown at me. I came in with zero expectations. And the movie opens up <laughs> and continues for like half the movie in this very like subdued yep. film noir <laughs> crawl yep. of just like slowly building tension Uh and i sat there 
stunned in my seat, <laughs> realizing I had accidentally walked in on a really good yeah. movie and sequel. Yeah, yeah. Whereas everyone else around me was kind of like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> the Philistines of Waterloo. And it got, it literally was at the point where Hologram Lady... Okay, spoilers for Blade Runner 2049. This, yeah. This, this actually made no, no, me no, don't actually, listen you know to what? Let, let's stop... Stop the podcast right here. <laughs> Just stop it right okay. now. Go out and watch this fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. We are we are not going anywhere. We'll wait. Go. Okay. Go watch it now. This cannot fail. Okay. I cannot have another <laughs> good sci-fi movie fucking fail. Okay. Not again. All right. And then you're gonna turn off. Watch the, it, and we'll be back. Turn off the podcast now. And welcome okay, back. back. All right. Now you've seen. Now you've seen, po- now, now yeah. seen it. Okay. Um, Wasn't it a good movie? It was really good. Like, holy. <laughs> It was, it's so good. So they're at the part where, and you remember the you remember this because you just watched this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of my favorite parts the, of the, the movie. Prostitute, yeah, the the hologram and the prostitute like merging into one yeah, being yeah. and being the most awkward sex scene. Yeah. Well, it wasn't like it wasn't even a sex scene. It no, it's it's, it's like the foreplay, and it was the most awkward grotesque thing but it's beautiful too yeah like it's it's so sad and grotesque and beautiful yeah and everyone in the fucking theater was kind of like oh what's going on huh? and that nervous laughter that <laughs> laughter of being presented with something that you can't comprehend that is gonna haunt me for so long <laughs> to just be surrounded by people who left the theater going like but i thought deckard was like a replicant or something. How did he get old and have sex? And me just being like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't be in this room. And I felt the blood oozing down my nostril <laughs> as my head was just whipping around in a frenzy. And then Jacob realized he was the replicant. <laughs> if, if it was, shit, what are they called? The tests in the first uh, The Voight, um... Void, void camp something like that it, it was like that movie was a void camp test for me, like the theater <laughs> experience of it oh wow or the really fucking scary ass new tests they have in that movie yeah or just the guy screaming at you in a white room. oh isn't that oh, okay all right we can't we can't those those of you who were foolish enough not to go out and watch blade runner 2049 um, go do that now. Let's let's wrap this shit up. Let's let you get on with your yeah. day. You go see that movie. All right. So what's so our our connecting theme? Common theme. I was thinking deconstruction because I was playing a video game that's very much a deconstruction of video games. You were watching a film about deconstructing capitalism, and in some ways, film, or at least trying, trying to. to. I will grant you that. So how do we feel about deconstruction? Sure. All right. I'm too beaten to argue with you, <laughs> uh, Sam. 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 Yes. What are you going to make me watch this this All next? Right. For this well, next? I have I have two and or I, not not two that I want you to watch, but I have two set up because I think maybe you've seen one of them. All right. Um. So I'll I'll put my first offer out. You are going to watch uh, another documentary. Did I make you watch a documentary? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What was it? Corey and the Scots. Oh yeah. Fuck. Okay. Technically a documentary. Was it describing real things? If so, it's a documentary. All right. Uh, I would like you to watch cult New Zealand hit Tickled, if you have not already seen it. I'm not seen oh, this. Oh, okay. You're going to watch Tickled. Because I wanted to get back to our roots of weird things we like that I'm not sure how you will feel about it. Yeah. What am I going to be watching or viewing or whatever? So, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yes. You have technically broken the rules oh, no. by making me watch something three times now. Hey. But I still now, now, the punishment. Here's the there's, thing. there's no rules in punishment. Fine, just continue, continue. Here's the thing. We're going to acknowledge that punishments are something of a great yes, area. Yes, yes. That it's just like, okay, we're supposed to follow the rules as often as we can. Mm-hmm. Our due diligence, yeah. I wanted to dick around with you. Yeah, I've done so much to you, <laughs> and you've not had your chance to, like, dig your knife into me a bit. So, like, I'm, I'm giving it to yeah, you, basically. Yeah. Well, uh, the price for that, time. however... Ooh, okay. The price for that, however, is my suggestion to you is something I do like, <laughs> ironically. Ooh. I do ironically love this. Oh, I don't know. That's, that's Sam, skirt in the line. Okay. It's the same skirt in the line as the punishment. Okay, okay. And you can take this as your punishment for what you've done wrong or just a normal well, suggestion. Let's see how I feel about it next week. Mm-hmm. Sam, Lay it on me. you are going to watch the Netflix animated series... Neo Yokio. 
Okay. Starring the voice acting talents of Jaden Smith. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> How many episodes is this? It will end up being the length of a normal movie. It's like okay. six 20-minute episodes. Okay. Nothing compared to what I normally put you through. Okay. Any final thoughts, Sam? Uh, fear. Tears in the rain, man. Tears in the rain. Like tears in the rain. In the rain. <laughs>